Hi, everyone. Today, I have an amazing guest with me that has some really amazing great technology that he's going to talk to us about. And I haven't really talked about too much technology yet, so this will be fun. And his name is Mark Fassell. And I'm going to let him introduce himself and tell us why why he got into this field of mental health and what's going on with him. And then I'll ask some questions as we go along and you'll get to know more about what he does. So thank you for being with us, Mark. Oh, thank you, Cynthia. I appreciate the time and willingness to talk to me. Sure. Well, tell us how you got started with your app, which is called Take Two Minutes. Absolutely. So Take Two Minutes, it has an interesting backstory, and I think it's very fitting for your audience. Take Two Minutes started, I want to say the year is around 2014 or 2015. And my older son, who is actually now a part of Take Two Minutes, and he helps me with some of the marketing efforts, but he was struggling a bit in high school with mental well-being. I would label it depression. I'm not a therapist or a counselor, but he was just a little bit depressed, it seemed like to me. And so as a caring parent, I just decided to start sending him a positive message every day around noon. In the middle of his school day, a text message that let him know he was loved, let him know that people care about him, just something uplifting and positive to him every day. And that was just something I took on. Now, being I am a technologist by nature, that quickly... I realized that most of my positive messages and positive thoughts in my brain, my, my free time, my free brain time was happening like on my yoga mat at five in the morning. And most parents and children will know that five in the morning is not the best time to text a child a positive message. He was probably still in bed at that point in time. So I made a little app that allowed me to text my positive thought to a phone number and it would take my positive message, put it into a Google Doc. I would go to my desk later on that day and I would open the Google Doc, kind of round it out and send it to him. Well, then I progressed it to where the app would actually just pick one out of the Google Doc and send it to him. And then after it was a little bit more robust, a few other people in my community wanted to receive the positive messages. And so I said, sure. And I made it where they could join and get the positive messages. And I really thought nothing more of it than that. I At that point in time, I had 10 people reading some positive messages that I was generating on my yoga mat in the morning. And it was kind of a fun little side thing. I was in a local shop one day, and it's a juice shop that sells fresh pressed juices. And I was talking to the person behind the counter about their message they received that day because they got the messages. They always loved them. They thought they were you know, very positive, helping them. And while we were talking, the person behind me in line, a complete stranger says, oh my gosh, I get your messages also. And I was taken back like, oh, I didn't know. And so I went home and looked and 300 people were getting the messages. So it had grown to a larger number of people than I ever expected. So at that point, I realized maybe I should do more with this. Maybe I should find a way to help more people besides just these positive messages I had created. So I reached out to my network of acquaintances and friends and got in touch with a psychologist at a Duke University who had a grant to study resilience and happiness in healthcare workers and students. He was willing to share with me all kinds of data. He was like, I think, eight years into his studies at that point in time. He had... 40,000 people through his program. And he had a whole lot of data, black and white data about what worked to help people get into a more positive mental state. Mm -hmm. He spent so many phone calls with me hours on end, just telling me all about this information. And I took it all and started making an app for it. And so that is what became Take Two Minutes. But the basis of it all is a long story. It started to help my teenage son with, with his struggles in high school. I love it. So that this is back when it was starting, but when you said you didn't even know 300 people were on it, is that because the people that were getting it were like, I love this. I'm going to send it to my friend and have them sign up. And that person's going to send it to their friend and they can sign up. And all that signups were happening kind of behind the scenes. And you didn't even realize that it had done that. That's correct. I had grown I love the that. Yeah. It was, it was just completely, I made it where you could text the word join to my phone number and it would join you to the system. And I didn't know it had grown that large. Oh, wow. That is so fun. And I love it when I love technology. I'm not a professional or haven't studied it in any way, but I love using it. And I love when it can do like these automations and these things that, and I think as a parent, I would have loved to have been able to automate something like that or know how to do that. And so tell us a little bit about how can parents use this kind of like you, you originally set it up where I want to send 
my child a positive message, but how can parents use this to help their teens feel more positive? I think there's a lot of answers to that. So the application has grown much larger than just positive messaging at this point. It does, it, we have a good eight or nine different activities built into the application now. So if you want gratitude journaling, and we can talk about all these things briefly mm -hmm. in, a, in a moment, but three good things, meditations, dream journaling, dream exercises help you fall asleep. They're all built into the app now. And as we added to that, I added the functionality I call groups. And the idea behind groups, and I'm going to answer your question here, is I have a lot of parents who reach out to me for that exact same question. How can I help my child or children using Take Two Minutes? And my answer often now is using the groups functionality. So groups functionality, the idea behind groups is somebody, a group administrator, creates a group in the system. They can then invite others to join their group. So as a parent who has a concern or need to help their child or children get into a better mental state, they can create a group. They can invite their child or children to the group, and this will allow them to talk to their children about the activities in Take Two Minutes and activities that could help their child or children get into a better mental state. The parent then, as the group administrator, is able to see which activities their children are partaking in. Now, the beauty of it is, though, we still have made it where the data entered by the children are private to the children. So if we go back to you know, the old days of having a diary, you, you, I know I've heard many times, that especially girls didn't want their parents or brothers to read their diary. Oh, that yes. same concept's in place here for Take Two Minutes. So what a child enters into their journal is not viewable by the parent. The parent, however, can look to see that data is being entered. And this works in a few ways. And I want to talk about gratitude journaling a bit because gratitude journaling is something that's really great for mental well-being. Mm -hmm. However, if you talk to a you know, 13, 14, 15-year-old about gratitude journaling, they may not even get it at, at that age or mm -hmm. you know, maybe they've been exposed to it. And so to give them a blank sheet of paper, and I, I use the blank sheet of paper as an analogy, obviously you, this is all text-based on your phone, but if you give them a blank sheet of paper and say, write something you're grateful for, I know I have a 16 year old right now and he would be like, I don't know, I, what, am I, what do you want me to do here type mm -hmm. thing. So take two minutes, I've developed a process and take two minutes called a gratitude challenge. The idea behind a gratitude challenge is it's for individuals who are not yet familiar with gratitude journaling. The gratitude challenge replaces your daily positive messages. So going back to original conversation, Take Two Minutes does still send out positive messages. The positive messages are broken into two categories now. We have a whole subset for youth and then the standard subset for adults. The gratitude challenge replaces your typical daily positive message with a gratitude statement and asks you to think of a reason why you are grateful for whatever it's talking about. So I'll give you a good example. And there's a couple hundred of these gratitude challenge statements in the system. But one of them is the sun provides warmth and light to our planet. Think of a reason why you like the sun. And that just gets someone. So with these 200 different prompts, you get different ones every day. It gives someone something to think about and create a reason why they're grateful for it. And it doesn't necessarily matter what your answer is, as long as you put a little thought into it and think of a reason why you are grateful for the question it's asking. That gets your mind into that subset of recognizing gratitude. After you do a gratitude challenge for 10, 14 days, however long you want to, you can set it up for as long as you want. After you do it for a certain amount of time, it gets you more familiar with the practice of gratitude journaling. And then ideally after that challenge time, you can take over and start doing your own gratitude journal. Mm -hmm. Well, I know I love journaling and I do a lot of it, but even though I've done it for forever, I like prompts. I'm always looking for more journaling prompts because that really gets me thinking in a certain direction that I wouldn't have went on my own. And then I'm like, and then I learn so much and I look at what I wrote. And sometimes I go back and look at prompts that I've answered last year. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't like, it's so insightful. And I, and it's just, it came out of me, but it was because I was prompted to do that. And so I kind of just go with journal prompts all the time, even though I probably could just write anything. And so you're saying that they could make it as long as they wanted it to be. Is that, I mean, like, is that kind of like they, if they needed a prompt forever, they could do that? Yeah. And forever is an interesting term. I think right now. <laughs> well, not I, forever. 
I, I limit the the gratitude uh, challenge to I think 21 days might be the, the I, I had there's a number that's a top end limit. I forgot mm -hmm. exactly what it is, but it lets you do it for longer. I, so you might during the sign up process, it does ask if you want to start with a gratitude challenge. Mm. That particular sign up process will automatically set it for seven days. However, mm -hmm. You can go through the regular sign up process, bypass that. Yes, I want to start with a gratitude challenge. And then once you start receiving your positive messages, you can go into the system by signing in and there's an ability to set how many days, or you can just text back to the system. I want to start a 20 day gratitude challenge and that mm -hmm. will set it for 20 days for you. So it's the ability to set it. And again, I yeah. do apologize. I forgot what the upper end limit I set in the code was, but I made it where it does cap it somewhere. Sure. Well, and even if you got, even if you still needed prompts and you got the same ones again, when you, wherever you are in life, you're going to answer it differently. You sure are. Yes. And I, I have learned that too, that I've gone back and answered the same prompts a year later, just to see like, what, how is, how is it different? How much have I grown? I grow every year and it's so fun for me to, to go back and see that. And when I worked in school, we did some stuff with gratitude and we taught the students that gratitude actually changes your brain chemistry. So we were talking about that a little bit before we got started. And you said, you know, some of the actual science of that, which I just know that it does. So tell us about that. So I love this question because we refer to it as priming. And I have a, a podcast where I do talk to counselors. We talk about priming a lot. The idea behind priming is as you start going down this path of creating gratitude statements, it does rewire your brain to recognize positivity. So Barbara Fredrickson, I think, is the psychologist who once said the negatives scream at us every day. We are predisposition to recognize the negatives. You have to sometimes look for the positives. So the idea of priming is you start writing down or recognizing things for which you're grateful. That helps your brain get rewired, for lack of better terms, to recognize things for which you're grateful or positive things around you. And as you do that more, it becomes more aware to you. And so with Take Two Minutes, there's a couple, there's a path I've created through our system that works well for this exact purpose. So if someone starts gratitude journaling, gratitude journaling ideally is done in the morning time or sometime in the early part of their day. Mm -hmm. So you write down, you sit down and you, and I, I want to say write, but you, in the terms of Take Two Minutes, you type into your phone or into your computer, your gratitude statement. That helps you recognize gratitude as you start your day. Then you go into a three good things exercise in the evening. Now, three good things is a 15 day challenge that every evening, ideally before you go to bed, the system sends you a text to remind you it's time for your three good things. It sends you a link. You click on the link and it takes you to a form you fill out. And the form you fill out asks you to think back on the day and think of three good things that either happened to you, that you did, that you saw, you witnessed. What It could be anything, but you're thinking of good things that were in the previous day. So you start your day with a gratitude journal, a gratitude challenge, and you end your day thinking of three good things that happened to you in that day. Mm -hmm. Both those activities together get your mind recognizing gratitude. The three good things is phenomenal because since you're doing it before you go to bed, as you fall asleep, your subconscious actually works on that positivity that you just generated by thinking of three good things. Mm -hmm. And it helps you with that positivity when you wake up. The data behind it shows that 15 days of three good things, so just, just 15 days of, of doing these three good things exercise will help rewire your mind for up to six months in the future. And it has a better lasting effect than taking SSRIs by the data. Oh my Which gosh. Is fascinating. That is wonderful. That sounds like a great thing to add, you know, as a life coach with kids who have anxiety, just talking to them about doing those kinds of things and, and showing them this app that they can use this to, to really rewire their brain to look for those positive things. I do an exercise with them where we just talk about like the, what you think about is what you notice in the world. And so we right. talk about how if you, if I tell you, do not see a school bus today, they're going to, you know, even if they're not at school, they're going to see one somewhere because they're thinking, I don't want to do this, or I don't want to see it, but then they do see it or, you know, because that's what they're thinking about. And we do the exercise where you, you know, I have them look around and I say, tell me everything that you see that's blue. And they 
just name off these different things and see it. And then I say, okay, now close your eyes and tell me everything that was yellow. And they're like, well, I don't know what was yellow because I wasn't thinking about it. And I'm like, that's the same way of, you know, if we're thinking, oh, my day is terrible and everybody hates me and this is the worst, this teacher is terrible and all this stuff, then you're going to see all the reasons why that's true. But and that's if you're so true thinking about the positive things and what is going right and the things that you do want, then you're going to start seeing the evidence that that is true. And so it's a similar thing, except they're like, it's really concrete where they're writing down what is it that they're grateful for? And also what are three good things that happened to me today? I love that. And I, I'm excited for this app because I can share it with all of my clients and they can use it in a way that will help them with their anxiety. Absolutely. And there are specific anxiety meditations built into the app as well. So we have meditations broken into many different categories. We have daily meditations and the daily meditation, just simply put every day, this new meditation, it gets sent out to the people who subscribe to daily meditations and you can meditate with that if you'd like to. There are also on-demand meditations and on-demand meditations are broken into different categories. So one is just what I call generic med meditation. So you could text to the system, I would like a three minute meditation spoken by a female. You're going to get that mm -hmm. back. A three minute meditation spoken by a female. At the same time, though, if you are having anxiety, if you are in a you know anxiety attack or a panic attack or just struggling right for a moment, you can text back to the system. Send me an anxiety meditation. We've got about 20 meditations that are just really focused on helping you calm down from anxiety. And it's going to give you one of those 20 meditations mm -hmm. as a subscriber to the system for people who actually do sign up and, and pay and subscribe. You can then create a library of your favorite meditation. So if you have an anxiety one that you really liked, you can just click the save to my library. And in the future, you have that one to go back to as many times as you want to. And one more thing about anxiety, we have a built in grounding exercise also, which really I'm sure you're familiar with grounding exercises mm -hmm. but that helps someone also calm down from a bit of a panic attack. And the idea behind the grounding, ex grounding exercise is to recognize your surroundings, right? So anxiety, a lot of times is a fight, fight or flight type panic attack in you because you're worried about something maybe happening. Mm -hmm. It's looking at this forward looking is what anxiety is, whereas mm -hmm. depression is rear looking. So as a forward looking, when it's happening and you're in that panic attack, recognizing things that are around you, you know, five things you can see. And like right now I can see you, I can see my plant in the reflection back here. I can go, go through and look at things I see. And then I can start thinking about what do I hear right now? And I have an air purifier over here running. I can hear that. And so that really brings me into the present moment, going through a grand exercise and that coming into the presence is what helps you calm down from that. Mm. And when you were talking about the meditation in a female voice, so it's not always just words on a text that they're reading about these things, but they can actually hear like Correct. something that they can listen to. And Correct. I have noticed that too, that when I talk about grounding exercises, or I teach my clients how to process that uncomfortableness in their body. And I, for a while I had like this list and I would talk to them about it and I would have like, do this and do this and do this. And I thought, well, if it was me that was experiencing this, I would want to hear someone talk me through it, especially right. if I'm, because your brain kind of goes offline half, at least half of it goes offline when you are anxious or panicked. And so you need someone else to help you talk through it. And so that's so perfect that it would be something that they could listen to, because that's what I finally did was create my own voice talking them through how to calm down or how to deal with uncomfortable emotions that they could download and put on their phone. But it, that's just one thing. Like, and I just send it to them so they can download it. But this is like, they could just ask for it and get like something to listen to, to ground or, or to meditate on as they were going through anxiety. So I love that too. Very cool. Yeah. I think our meditations and I'm, don't have the exact number, but we've got somewhere around 400 audios of, of meditation, meditational audio. That's mm -hmm. all not, it's all proprietary to take two minutes. It's not like it's, you know, common meditations out there that we just took. It's, they were all crafted just for take two minutes. Okay. That's well, and you had mentioned too, and I think you said this before we started recording that you have a lot of psychologists, counselors, people who have been part of creating these meditations and positive sayings, because since you're not, you weren't in the mental health field before you decided to get into the mental health field, that you you wanted to get advice and expert 
ideas about what should be in this app. That is correct. Yeah, I have had, luckily, I've been very fortunate to have people all along the way to view what I've done, give me feedback, even the messages we send out. The messages have been read by psychologists and therapists and ones that they thought might not be as accurate. We've changed, edited, removed the exercises, you know, three good things. Again, a lot of data behind that one. It's an activity, gratitude journaling. And this has all been looked at by coaches, counselors, and therapists, and psychologists throughout the years. And again, take two minutes. I don't think we touched on it. It became an actual product in late 2019. And so it's it's matured a little bit by now. And we've had 30,000 people use the application since 2019, which is really still a small mm -hmm. amount. If you think about how many people need assistance, right. 30,000 is a small amount of people who've used it. And that's probably the struggle I have a little bit is getting the word out, people to recognize take two minutes and that it's, mm -hmm. a, it's an option for people to use and hopefully use to get assistance they need. Yeah. Well, and now that I'm thinking about, cause I went, I looked through the stuff this morning to kind of refresh myself on what we might talk about. And I think there was something about sleep hygiene in there. Is that right? Okay. There is, and all eight. teens have a yes. problem with sleeping. So tell us how that yes. works. <laughs> So there's a page on sleep hygiene. There's an article or a blog entry about sleep hygiene, and those are just informative. It's information for them. Okay. However, there is also a whole exercise around helping people fall asleep. And that mm -hmm. I call it sleep audio is what I call it. And, mm -hmm. I, and I like this feature and it's been used a lot as well. There are at least eight, eight that I know of proven methodologies to help people fall asleep. Some of them are used by the military. Some have been used by psychologists. Some are used by sleep studies. But ultimately, there's eight different methodologies to help someone fall asleep. Some of them are mental, like things mm -hmm. you think about. Some of them are breathing exercises to help you calm down. So we've taken those eight different methodologies and made those part of what we call sleep audio. And the way they work is you can, again, everything in my app you can text. And I used text very purposefully because we all carry one of these these days. Mm -hmm. And I know that text messaging through my research is the best way to get a, in touch with someone who yes. needs assistance. And I'm mm -hmm. this is getting, getting to your answer, but ultimately app notifications by some of my competitors' applications, people don't read app notifications. App notifications, you can turn them off, you can ignore them, you can forget about them. Whereas a text message you're going to usually read, and I should say usually, this data shows a text message has a 92% read rate within three minutes. So mm -hmm. that means when I send a text message, someone's going to get it. So back to my answer, you can text back to the system, I need help sleeping. It's going to pick a random sleep methodology for you and send it to you. If you don't like that one or doesn't work for you, that's okay. There's still seven others to try. Mm -hmm. And the idea is you're going to find one you love. And the beauty behind it is, in addition to the sleep exercise, there's background tracks, which you can uh, sometimes I want to say overlay, but technically underlay under the sleep exercise. So if you want to have four, seven, eight breathing is one you like, let's say hypothetically, you want to use four, seven, eight breathing and you want it with ocean waves in the background. You mm -hmm. can request, I want four, seven, eight breathing with ocean waves. It's going to send you that audio. And then you're going to have someone guide you through the four, seven, eight breathing methodology while there's ocean waves in the background of the whole thing. And the mm -hmm. way it works is after about two and a half minutes of the person guiding you, they kind of fade off into the background and you just have the ocean waves continuing in the background for you to fall asleep in with. Mm, I love that. Yeah. I, I think that that is becoming like the big thing. I like, well, I like ways, um, like a fan running or something like that. I can't sleep in complete silence. But I, most of my clients are listening to something like they have earbuds in, or they have something, some kind of videos on YouTube or listening to podcasts or something. I don't, I mean, they all wanted to listen to different things, but they're all listening to something as they're going to sleep. I don't think I really have any clients that are going to sleep in silence. So, and, and maybe they're, yeah. And so this sounds like this would be very helpful if someone is having trouble and teens do have trouble going to sleep because of their circadian rhythms have changed when they're a teenager and they, it makes them want to stay up later and sleep later. And so maybe that would be something that they could do to get more sleep because unfortunately school doesn't change what time they start and they still have to get up early and do all the things, right. even though their bodies don't want to do that. So getting that sleep is really important for, well, for everyone. It's just the way that we, we, 
do our, do everything, our bodies repair itself and how we yes. stay healthy is being able to sleep. And I don't have any trouble sleeping. I, I've always been somebody that could immediately go to sleep and sleep all night. Well, midlife has changed the sleep all night part, but I still can go back to sleep pretty easily. So I'm glad because I've seen people in my family who really struggle with that and don't really know what is the best thing to do. So this could be another thing that they could try and hopefully that could be helpful to them. So yeah, the sleep what do you is very popular and real quickly, going back to our original question for when we first started this <laughs> parents, again, if they sign up their children and create a group, they can see if their children are partaking in sleep activities. Also, it's one of the things they can oh, check okay. to see if they're actually doing it. Oh, that's so cool. I love that. And I think that this would be great as a family. My kids are adults and moving on with their lives, but I, when they were younger, I would have loved to have had something like this where I could, you know, share something with them, but also be able to see that they were partaking in it without like being too intrusive because teenagers don't want us to ask them a bunch of questions or are you doing this? Are you doing that? And so you could just kind of be watching that without really bothering them a lot about it. So that would be cool. Now I have grandkids and they're not old enough to have devices, but when that happens, you know, I'll have to talk to them about experiencing that with them too, which I think is a great idea. So I'm guessing that most for my listeners, you're wanting them to go to the app and see what it's all about and check it out and sign up for it so that they can share it not only with themselves and help their own mental health, but for their children as well. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I, the app was created to help people. It is a nonprofit. So the, you know, the goal is not to become a large corporation. The goal is just to help people. Mm -hmm. Obviously as a nonprofit, it has to still be sustainable. It, it has costs that are associated yes. with it. The costs so far aren't salaries. The costs are all the infrastructure to keep it running. It's not a small system. It runs on, you know, a little bit techie here, but it runs across 14 different servers to keep mm -hmm. it running. And that's also to keep data privacy in place. My background is technology. I understand, and I'm not going to even try to claim it's HIPAA compliant, but I do understand HIPAA compliancy and I've done all the right things. You know, the data is uh, encrypted. The data is encrypted at rest. The data about the individuals is separated from the data they enter. So all those things are in place to make sure it's a secure system. But of course, all those things come at a cost, right? So a large part of it right now is trying to get users to help keep it running so we can do more with it and help more people. Yeah, I love that. I hope that's well, a good answer. <laughs> yes, it's a wonderful answer. And I will be putting all of that in the show notes so that people are can just click on it and go go see what it's all about. And then is it okay if people email you? I can't remember if you put your email in my guest, but do, would you want to hear messages from people about what's going, what they're experiencing or questions they might have? Absolutely. I'm always, I love to hear from users. Uh, users get in touch with me often and a lot of, most of it, knock on wood, is good feedback about how the system's helping them. I get a lot of good testimonials, but at the same time, if they have something that didn't work for them, obviously I want to hear about that too, because I always want to improve the system. Sure. And, you sense. know, something we can even do is I can create a coupon code for you that you can mm -hmm. include with it and people can get a, a certain amount off. And I'll make sure I do that. And I'll send it to you via email once we finish talking here, Cynthia. Yeah, that would be great. I would love that. I always like to have little promotions that I can promote my guests in some way and make sure that people get involved in your world as well. I love that. Very good. Well, I'm I so glad that you were with us today. I am so glad to be here. I appreciate your time and I appreciate the questions and I hope the conversation helps some people think of ways they can improve their self-being and wellness. Mm -hmm. Well, it has helped me because I want to share it with all my clients. So <laughs> very good.